Good evening, this is Bell Gerald, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11 in virtual reality. Howdy folks, and we are back with some more X-Plane 11, and we're back in the Cowan Sims 222. Two, two. Yep, this is the Bell 222 two, two Bravo model. This is the model that I promised you the full video of. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to check out the startup tutorial that we did recently with the UT model. So today, we're actually going to take this uh, 222 Bravo on a little tour of Chile. Yes, you may have noticed there is a Chilean flag flying over this airport. This is Torres del Paine Airport. And it is in pretty much close to the mountains of southern Chile. We can actually look on the map here and I actually have two maps for you this time. So this is of course the XPad map here and we can only zoom out so much. But you can see there's a carrier off the coast there. This is where the Pacific Ocean would be. And then, of course, we've got all the uh, archipelago of islands there and so on and so forth. So we are actually in this area and we're pretty much staring at these mountains here. Now, the scenery that we are actually using for today is by Frank Dionese and Fabio Bellini. You have seen them before on this channel. I've done their Everest, and I've done a couple of their other things. I want to say the Matterhorn episode was one of theirs as well. And this is the latest that they've come up with for X-Plane. Now, the real question, does it match up to the majestic, mountainous grandeur that they've done in the past? That's what we intend to find out on our little tour today. So, just to give you an idea of where we are flying, we are pretty much smack dab in the center, right here. So, this fictitious ICAO code, uh, X-Ray Lima Charlie Tango, this is the airport that we're at right here. And to be more precise, we're actually on Hotel Papa Tango Papa, the helipad just to the south of the airport. So our destination is actually just going to be across the bay there, which is Hotel Papa Hotel Echo. You can see it right over there, it's that little island right off in that direction. But to get there, we're actually going to check out some of the other helipads in this area. So my plan is we're going to head west for starters. So we're going to fly off in that direction. And we are going to take our first stop at H-Pan, Hotel Papa Alpha November. And then from there, we're going to head southeast, and we're going to head over to Hotel Papa Alpha Hotel. And after we've checked out both of those helipads, we are then going to fly north by northeast to H-Pan, which I'm assuming is probably one of the major helipads in this area, otherwise it wouldn't have like a full name attached to it. I don't know, I could be wrong. But this is also going to be the closest helicopter, or helipad, I should say, to those mountains over there. So that's the main reason why we're going to be checking that out. And then we'll fly back over the lakes here and make our way back to our final destination, which, as I stated earlier, is Hotel Papa Hotel Echo. So yeah, that is the plan for today. I have taken the liberty of starting the helicopter. That was pretty much the reason why I did that start tutorial as our last video, because I wanted to show you in depth how to actually get this bird started. And we're pretty much set to go. We've even got our landing lights on right now. So pretty much everything is in order. The only thing we need to do is pull on the collective and of course adjust our cyclic and pedals and we're off. But first, Let's do a quick check outside just to make sure that our pad is clear before we take off.
Okay, everything looks kosher, and as you can see, we've got our co-pilot here, and we've got our passengers in the back. We'll be joining them a little bit later on in the flight. But now, it is time for us to go, so let us lift up the collective. And it's going to want to roll to the right, or yaw to the right, so we'll give it a little bit of left pedal, and we'll slowly but surely ease her up. Now this thing does have uh, trim and force trim, so we can utilize that as well when it comes to flying this helicopter. And it does make life a ton easier. Not to mention the fact that this thing also has autopilot, so we're going to be putting that to its paces as well. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and get our gear up before we get too fast. Got to remember, we're not using the one that has the skids this time. We're actually using the one with the gear. All right, so welcome to Chile. Welcome to Torres del Paine. And once again, there's our final destination for the day. And we can take a quick look at the majestic mountains. That is what uh, Frank and Fabio are most well known for, is their mountain scenarios. That's their specialty, I guess you would say. And I have to admit, they always do a pretty good job on modeling the mountain meshes and so on and so forth. So, I really don't have too much to complain about when it comes to any of their scenery. This one does feel a little bit different. I'm not quite sure what exactly it is, but it, it definitely feels a little bit... I don't know, I don't want to say it's lacking, but it doesn't feel as intense as some of the other sceneries that they've done. Probably the most notable one that uh, Frank and Fabio put out have been uh, the Dolomites in Italy. That is single-handedly the most impressive mountain scenery ever. And bear in mind, it's competing against the likes of the Himalayas, and I thought the Himalaya scenery was really freaking awesome. But I don't know, there's something about this one that just seems a little bit different to me, and I can't quite put a finger on it as of yet. But with that having been said, uh, we still have a short distance to go, probably another five or so minutes until we reach the H-Pan. So now would probably be a good time for me to show you what the autopilot is like. So you'll see that uh, square in the center there. I'm gonna click on the autopilot button. And we're also going to set up our altitude hold. We're roughly about 1,300 feet. So there we go. And we also have a heading hold that we can use. So before I start veering off course, I'm gonna set that up as well. This is our heading button here. And you know what? I think I pushed the wrong one. There we go. I want the heading button. All right. So now we're going to basically follow the little orange marker that we've got here. And we can check out our map just to make sure that we're actually going the right way. And I've tried to give myself enough clearance to get over these hills here, over to the other lake. And we're basically going to follow that lake to the left, which I'm assuming is to the south. Yeah, according to the map there. All right, but for right now, let's go back to the outside view really quick and check this bird out in flight. Check that out. There's even some glaciers here, too. All right, we need to be heading south, so let's go ahead and use the autopilot for that. Meanwhile, we can take a closer look at those glaciers. Wow, that is really neat. Now, remember that uh, Chile and its position on the Earth is pretty much close to the South Pole. It's one of the closest countries to the South Pole. Argentina, of course, being the other. So yeah, we can expect that uh, the climate here is probably going to be pretty, well, dare I say it, chilly. <laughs> yeah, I know, I've got dad jokes all day long. 
All right, we are getting ready to come into our first destination, so I'm going to go ahead and take it off of autopilot as soon as we straighten out here. And we'll see if I still remember how to bring this bird in without breaking the gear. All right, so autopilot, we're going to turn you off. And we'll start bringing her down. We'll change our trim a little bit here. We also want to lose a lot of airspeed. Now, I believe our helipad is pretty much behind those buildings there, but I'll need to overfly it just to kind of get an idea of which way the wind is blowing. So let's do that right now as we make our way down. We also need to watch our speed because, of course, this thing can get into a vortex ring state if you are not careful. And I'm probably going to be a little bit bumpy on my descent here. Okay, so this is our first town. Looks like it's a little camping town. I have to admit, folks, I really do not know much about this area of the world. And uh, even though there is some information in the scenery package when you get it in the manual, it really doesn't tell me a whole heck of a lot as to why people would want to go here. Other than, of course, to check out the amazing mountains, I would imagine. Let's get our gear down while I'm thinking about it. Okay, so there is our helipad right there. We are coming in a little fast. We're at 60 knots, so let's see if we can slow it down. There we go. All right, and now we're going to do the ballet of speed here. I want to make sure I'm not going to hit these trees. Looks like we have a little bit of a clear spot in between uh, the tree to our left and, of course, that little guy there to the right. So let's go ahead and bring her in. Try to keep it roughly around 20 knots. All right, I'm feeling good about this. I don't know about you all. So far, I'm liking it. All right, let me sit back in my seat here. That way, I'm not, like, clenching up. <laughs> Helicopters are definitely a strange animal, and if you've taken a liking to them, as I have in X-Plane or DCS or even Airfly FS2, you know exactly what I mean. It takes a steady hand to get the job done. Okay, but here we are. This is our first destination. We're just going to call it H-Pan because I don't think it actually has an official name. I believe all of these helipads that we're looking at are fictional. So there we go. But one thing I will do before we get going again is I will go back to the outside view and just kind of check around the scenery here before we take off. So well, let's do that right now. Alright, so this is our first helipad location, and I gotta admit, this one is one of my personal favorites when it comes to this scenery. Now, full disclaimer here, the way I've got my settings set up, I actually have some things turned down a little bit. For example, the um, textures, I actually have that down a notch, so instead of having my textures at maximum, I actually have them at high. And the reason why I do that is because of the fact that I am recording in VR and OBS is notorious for stealing a lot of my frames per second. So I kind of want to give myself an advantage by upping the amount of frames that I actually have inside of X-Plane before OBS actually starts recording. So you may look at like some of these buildings here and see that the textures look a little bit blurry. Don't worry, that's not the scenery itself. That's just because of the way that I've got everything set up. So there you go. Figured I needed to get that out of the way because I don't want you to like hate on Frank and Fabio's work. It's actually my doing here. But hopefully it at least conveys the point across. All right, so next destination is H-Pa. 
and that is actually due southwest. So I think before we take off, what I should do is I should actually set up our heading hold. Uh, let's see, what direction would that be? Uh, 120 sounds good. So we'll set that up at 120. And then once we get into a stable flight, we will set up our autopilot just as we did before. And have at it. All right, so let's take off. Collective coming up, pedal going to the left, cyclic coming back. Nice. Very nice. Okay, let's go ahead and start trimming her up here. And I think I need to get a little bit higher before I put the gear up. Yep, right about there is good. Gear's coming up. That little sound that you're hearing is our low altitude warning. It sounds whenever the gear is down, or excuse me, whenever the gear is up and you are too low. So, that's how we get rid of that, is by simply getting higher. Or I guess we could put the gear back out and that'll shut it up as well. All right, so what did we want? We wanted a heading of 120 degrees. We'll continue heading east here until we uh, get over uh, this little hill. Looks like there's a tiny river on the other side. Now I'm assuming that Frank used uh, ortho photos for this. It looks like the way that he does it, uh, it's not truly an ortho photo as you would think of with say, Microsoft Flight Simulator or Ortho for XP. What he does is kind of like a hybrid. He actually creates his own textures that are based on the real world ortho photos, but obviously come out looking a little bit different and in a lot of ways, a lot more natural too. The way he kind of seamlessly blends it in with the actual X-Plane texture is what really amazes me. In fact, I am kind of hard-pressed to figure out whether or not I'm flying over default X-Plane terrain or Frank and Fabio's work. Although I know better, as soon as I see that little river down there, I know that is Frank and Fabio's work. All right, I think we are where we want to be, so let's go ahead and get the autopilot back on. Make sure she is stabilized. We're at 1,500 feet right now. We really don't need to get much higher than that. We're not exactly going to be climbing the mountain peaks today. But we do want to get our heading hold back on, so let's turn that on. And we'll check our nifty little X-pad just to make sure that we are on the right course. Yep, it looks like we are going to be going downwind of the helipad. So what I plan on doing is we'll actually go over the water here. And then we will turn around and come back in. All right, so now is a good time for us to go to the outside view. supposed to be that many trees in the river unless we're supposed to believe that that might be a swamp I don't know with so many glaciers around I'd find it hard to believe there's a swamp down here too all right but we are getting kind of close to our second destination so let's go ahead and take the autopilot off and we'll begin lowering some airspeed and some altitude and let's see looks like there's a little valley in between there so let's say we take this puppy down there of course it has to be done because well it's me <laughs> who else is gonna do it and it's not like this helicopter can't handle it because after all let's not forget that this is the helicopter 
that they used for the 1980s television show Airwolf. Now, to be a bit more specific, it's actually the A model that they heavily, heavily modified to create Airwolf. However, the B is probably as close as we're going to get here in X-Plane. In fact, you may have noticed the livery that I'm rocking today actually is the Airwolf livery. And it's kind of funny because I've been joking around with uh, Mr. Cowan as he was building this thing. And I was kind of wondering if he was actually going to put the weaponized version of Airwolf in there. He doesn't have to, and honestly, I really don't think he's going to, but it's just one of those things that kind of harkens back to my childhood. And actually, I think a lot of us of my generation who are into helicopters now, we can safely say that uh, we got our love in part from Airwolf. So, yeah, a little bit of history there for you. And incidentally, this aircraft, um, it stopped production in 1991, so it's actually no longer being produced. The B model, I should say, is no longer being produced. Um, but of course, you've got uh, other updated versions, like the 230, as opposed to the 220. And I believe that one is still being produced today. From my understanding, I think this thing got its first flight in 1976, and it actually didn't uh, make it to the assembly line in full production until like close to the 80s. I want to say like 79 thereabouts. All right, there is our helipad. So just like before, we're going to fly over and see which way the wind is blowing. Oh boy, it looks like from south to north. And I'm not going to lie, folks, that is going to be one heck of a landing. Holy crap, look how tight that spot is. All right, this is this is gonna get really interesting. So let's see if we can slow down here. Oh boy, I am making no guarantees on this landing here. This might just be the end of the episode, folks. <laughs> All right, let me pitch us up a touch, lose some airspeed, get the gear down. Okay, we're looking good. And actually, it looks like uh, I already have the gear down. All right. Uh, let's see. I don't know how this is going to work. Yeah, this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. All right. Let's bring her in. Keep that nose up. we got to be really careful because it sounds to me like we could easily hit our tail rotor on any of these trees around here. I'm not looking forward to that, let me tell you. Oh boy, yeah, we might need to go around on this one. There is no way in heck I'm going to be able to bring this thing in. So we'll swing out to the right this time and we'll lose a little bit more airspeed. Okay, now let's see if I can pull this off. All right, we'll try to get into somewhat of a stable hover here. We'll lose the rest of that forward airspeed while I'm at it. Okay. Now the real question is, where is our helipad? I know it's like directly below me, but there's like very little margin for error here. Okay, we are directly above it, so let's uh, straighten out here. Oh boy, that windsock is awful close. Awfully close. Can we pull it off? Maybe, possibly, I do need to push backward just a touch here. Right there is good. Whew. That was rough. That was rough. We better go outside and make sure that we haven't, like, broken something on this thing.
well, believe it or not, we suffered no damage on that landing. I still can't believe it myself. <laughs> okay, that is definitely one of the tightest spots that I've ever had to get a helicopter into here in X-Plane. Wow. Okay. Well, for our next leg, we have our longest portion of the flight coming up. We're going to be flying almost due north, kind of north, northeast, and we're going to be heading to H. Payne. So, without further ado, let's see if I can take off vertically, and we'll set ourselves up. And actually, you know what? Before I take off, I should probably set my heading bug. So, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what do we want? Maybe 020, roughly? Yeah, I think we can work with that. We can always adjust once we're airborne and under autopilot control. But first, I gotta get out of here. Oh boy, wish me luck, folks. Here we go. Electives coming up. Pedal to the right. Cyclic back. And let's just go straight up. Let's get that gear up. I'm not sure what happened there earlier. I may have forgotten to pull it up. I thought I did. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those strange editing mysteries. Who knows? Alright, but we are airborne, so we're good to go. And we're going to head this way, get a little bit more airspeed. And we'll bring it back up to, what were we at? 1,500 feet, I believe. And that's actually one thing that I've noticed about this area. Granted, those mountains look really, really tall, but I'm noticing that the lowlands here seem to be somewhere close to sea level. So that's an unexpected thing, I guess, of this area that I really didn't know about. And like I said earlier, I don't know much about this portion of South America. This is a little further south than I have explored ever in x -Plane. So this is all brand new virgin territory for me here. I will say, though, that we will end up passing by our original departure location on our way to this next spot. So let me see if I can continue bringing us up. We want, what, 1,500? Yeah, that should be about fine. Those mountains do look impressive, but today is not the day for me to try and head over there and play chicken with the mountains. That would probably be a bad idea, knowing my luck. Alright, let's stabilize ourselves here. So, autopilot's coming on, altitude is coming on. Okay, the only thing we're missing now is our heading bug, our heading hole. Alright, so... While we're at it, let's go back to the outside view and we'll take a, another look at our departure area and, of course, our arrival area and, of course, those wonderful mountains directly ahead before we begin to make our right-hand turn to head to H. Payne. Yeah, once again, we're looking at the gorgeous uh, terrain and how it just kind of meshes in with the default X-Plane scenery. If you look closely enough, you can probably tell what is default terrain. That's usually the very lighter ground textures. And then, of course, all the more rich colors. I'm thinking that's more of uh, Frank and Fabio's work. Either way, when it comes together, it looks really good. 
but that right there is what they are well known for is their mountains and it is my understanding that they were actually looking into bringing these mountains into Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now I want to say that the um, the process may have been stalled a little bit. If I'm not too mistaken, they were having some issues with the SDK or the software developers kit that may preclude them from actually being able to bring this package and some of their other mountain packages into Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm hoping that they will be able to pull it off because honestly, even though I love the way that uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is done, I do think there are some areas of opportunity and the mountains are definitely one of those areas. Based on like real world pictures and videos that I've seen of some of the more famous mountains around the world, it does sound like they could use Frank and Fabio's tender loving touch when it comes to getting those peaks a little bit more accurate. But it is what it is, and I'm hoping that Frank and Fabio can uh, actually get this all sorted out, and we will eventually see them in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Alright, uh, we appear to be about six or seven minutes away from H. Payne, so I think now would probably be a good time to turn off the autopilot again. So go ahead and hit that. And so far, I have to say this aircraft has been absolutely phenomenal. When I say Cowan Sim has knocked it out of the park with this, granted, since this is their first helicopter ever for X-Plane, I have to admit that they picked just the right one. It's twitchy where it needs to be twitchy. It's stable where it needs to be stable. And boy, oh boy, this thing will holler at you if you do things badly. I know I've made my fair share of mistakes flying this thing so far, but overall, I absolutely love it. This is one of those helicopters that you just have to give it a two thumbs up. And the fact that he's even included uh, co-pilot and passengers in there, which we're gonna hop in the back on our next leg here, that, I think, is probably the coolest part of all with this helicopter. As I'm flying in VR, one thing that I do like to have are people inside the aircraft. Otherwise, it just feels like a ghost aircraft. And I know I'm probably in a minority when it comes to that, because I know a lot of you would actually prefer to have no humans or no mannequins, if you will, in the cockpit. But this is just one of those weird things about me that I guess uh, DCS probably brought it home. I'm so used to having, you know, co-pilot and other crew members inside the cockpit, in particular with things like the Huey and whatnot. So I'm glad to see that more and more developers are doing that in X-Plane. I really do appreciate it. And the fact that it's optional should make everybody happy because you don't have to have the passengers and crew. All right, so we are currently passing by our next spot right there. That is H. Payne, and I want to say the wind is probably going to be in the same direction, so from south to north. So let me just take a look at our HSI here. We are currently heading north, so we're going to need to turn around. And we're also going to need to lose airspeed and get our gear down. So let's pull the collective down just a touch here. And I want to say this is probably going to be the highest in elevation when it comes to the helipads that we are visiting today. It might take us a couple of tries to get in, but let me get our gear down now. Okay, I definitely heard the gear this time. I'm not sure what happened last time. I must have just simply forgotten it. Hmm. Either that or I might have hit the button accidentally when I was uh, coming back from one of those exterior shots that I like to do. All right, so we got a better view of the windsock, and it looks like we are going to need to land in this direction right here. Okay, so we're going to loop around once more. Got to watch that RPM. Make sure we don't get into too high or too low of an RPM state here. That, either way, can be very bad in a helicopter. All right, and we are going to follow this road on our way in. 
picking up a lot of airspeed though, so I need to pull the collective back just a bit. And let's make our turn final. Don't want to sink too low. 400 feet per minute should be just about fine. I think the golden rule is like uh, no more than about 500 feet per minute, which you can see we're right about there right now. Any more than 1,000 feet per minute and you're basically begging for disaster in a helicopter such as this, or actually in any helicopter. All right, so we'll trim up just a touch here. And that way we can control her better with lower airspeed. It looks like we're perfectly lined up. Thankfully, there are no trees anywhere remotely close to our landing pad. I like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in and make sure our rotors don't actually hit that windsock to my right. There's the edge. Straighten out. We actually passed by the pad. Okay, so maybe I can backtrack us here a little bit. This is what it's all about when you're flying a helicopter, folks, is learning to fly precisely. And it is not as easy as it looks. But we're down. All right, so welcome to H. Payne. And as I had stated earlier, this is probably as close as we are going to get to these absolutely breathtaking mountains. But now you can really see them in all their glory. And we're going to go to the outside view, just as we always do, to take a closer look. So there you go folks, take another look at those beautiful mountains. Man, I gotta say, every single time that Frank and Fabio come out with a mountain scenery, it's like I fall in love all over again. And as we've seen, this one is definitely not perfect. There are some areas of improvement and it does feel to me, because of that, that it's a little bit lacking compared to some of the other ones that I've seen. But nothing they can't fix for sure. And I think that overall, this is a very good package. I love the fact that it's got certain rustic charm to it. That's pretty cool. All right, but we have one more stop left on our journey today. And that is gonna be uh, pretty close to where we started from. So just to remind you, that is Hotel Papa Hotel Ech or Echo. Almost said X-ray there, as if X-ray <laughs> starts with E. <laughs> oh boy, what can I say? It's the day after Halloween as I'm recording this. It's the beginning of my birth month. I'm gonna be 50 years old. It's a wonder my brain is even still working. Woo. But we'll deal with that a little bit later on this month. All right, let's go ahead and take off. Collective coming up, cyclic going back. Pedals turning, and here we go. We're out of here. All right, let's get our gear up real quick. And we're gonna need to make a left here because what I wanna do is I wanna follow the water on our way in. Because if you look at our nifty little uh, X pad map there, you'll see that the lake pretty much will take us over to where we need to go. So let's get some more altitude again. What did we have it at before? 1500 it was, right? You can just yell at your monitor and let me know. I'm pretty sure it was 1500, so we'll keep rising up here. And look at that, there's another mountain off in the distance. Now I don't know if those distant mountains are also a part of Frank and Fabio's package. I wanna say they could be. 
because those look a little bit too detailed to be just default x plane mountains. But I'm not 100% sure on that. I do know that they look absolutely outrageously good. So we'll go with that. I don't know if I'll ever be fortunate enough to travel to this part of Chile in real life. I highly doubt it, at least in this lifetime. But man, oh man, is this beautiful country. Alright, I'm thinking right here is just about good, so we're gonna get the autopilot on. There we go. And we're at, what, 1300? Eh, we can probably gain a little bit more. Let's see if we can pull her up to about 1400. Then I can be certain that we are absolutely gonna pass all of the hills. Alright, right there is good. Let it do its thing. Come on, behave yourself. And let's quickly get our heading hold on. Bam. Whoop, wrong one. Bam. That's what I want. And now I can basically just control the flight of this helicopter by changing the heading hold. That's it. So easy. I love it. Alright, so as we pass the uh, most majestic peaks of the mountain once again we're going to go back to the outside view because i need screenshots for our youtube thumbnail Okay, so say your goodbyes to the mountain. We are going to turn off our autopilot and begin heading south on our way in. So yeah, absolutely beautiful stuff here. And I could not have picked a better helicopter to do this tour. This helicopter is just so stable and so awesome to fly around in. All right, so there's our destination directly up ahead. I did promise you a view from the back, so let me turn the autopilot on one more time here. And we'll make sure that we are pretty much stable. We'll drop our airspeed a little bit here, so that way we're not like uh, crashing into the ground. And let me just go into the back really quick here. All right, and here we are in the back, and hey, you look familiar. I haven't seen you for a little while there. <laughs> and look at that. He even thought to put a redhead back here for me. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> if there's only one minor complaint that I have, all of these uh, passengers are linked as one object file. It might have been a little bit better if you would have separated them out so that we can have each individual person um, removed from the helicopter shall we say you know if you just want to have like less than all four people in the helicopter because as you can see i'm currently sitting inside of a dude here and i'm pretty sure my hands don't look like that <laughs> but it is what it is and i'm at least grateful that he remembered to add that redhead in there for me <laughs> that was awesome Okay, so now that we are back in the front, let's go ahead and bring this bird in for our final destination of the day. Now, if I were thinking about it, I would probably have tried to pull off what I did the last time. If you watch the uh, start tutorial video all the way through to the end, you know that I threw a little Easter egg in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of want to do that now, but no, no, I think we're just going to try and come down the old-fashioned way here. All right, well, first things first, we need to find our airport. I think that is it right there. There's our helipad. 
And the airport that we took off from, we are now currently directly overhead. Let's go ahead and drop our gear while we're at it. Okay, gear is coming down. And we're just going to go on an extended downwind leg here as we make our way in. So what my plan is, is to turn around and then we'll land at the helipad. And we'll call this episode done at that point in time. So, while we're making our way down, I do want to thank you as always for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this extended tour of the uh, Bell 222 Bravo. Be sure to thank Cowan Simulations, and I've actually got to give Cowan Sims a very special thank you for the review version of both of these helicopters. Really do appreciate it, and I am so glad that you kept me in the loop on this one, because this is a work of art. I can't wait to see what you decide to do next. Bravo. Absolutely bravo. Alright, and I should also give thanks to Frank Dionis and Fabio Bellini, even though I did not get a review copy of this scenery. I did purchase it myself. Like everything else that I've purchased that uh, belongs to Frank and Fabio, it is definitely well worth it, and I would recommend that you pick it up. This one, I think, still has some areas of opportunity, but with that having been said, it's still a Frank and Fabio special, and quite frankly, I love it. <laughs> okay, so it may take us a little while to get down here, so we'll kind of check out the scenery here. It looks like we've got some trucks there. Don't ask me how they were able to navigate those mountain roads. Sheesh. Wow, there's even a cement mixer down there. Well, maybe he's going to, like, uh, create some more roads and whatnot. I know they usually use asphalt for roads, but, hey, concrete will probably do in a pinch. And according to the windsock, we need to land this away. So, yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. All right, we'll make sure our gear is down. It is. I'm just going to kind of swing around here a little bit. I'm going to trim our nose up. There we go. All right, now we're going to start dropping in airspeed. But hopefully I should be able to show you some low-speed antics as we bring this baby in. All right, so here it is, the final island for this scenery package. And we're probably going to end up landing a little crosswind here. So we'll give it some right pedal. Okay, now we're starting to look good. We don't want to drop in the water, though. So we'll inch our way forward. Make sure we get over the shrubbery. Try not to hit our tail rotor on said shrubbery. And we'll see if we can plop her down right on the H. There it is. All right. So, thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been flying in X-Plane 11.50. Just to remind you, the helicopter that I've been showing off today has been the Bell 222. This is the Bravo model. You can also get the UT Uniform Tango model, or you can even get both of them together in one package. They are created by Cowan Sim or Cowan Simulation. The link, of course, is in the video description below. We've been flying around in the South American country of Chile, in particularly at uh, Torres del Paine by Frank Dionis and Fabio Bellini. And same thing, the link is going to be in the video description below. If you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe, so that way you will get notified as to when I put some more X-Plane goodness up. More than likely for our next video, we're going to head back over to Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I'll try to keep alternating sims here and there as I get new and interesting things that I want to show you. All right, but that will just about do it for me, so thank you as always again for watching, and I will talk to you all really soon. Ciao! Yeah.